Welcome to the house of the Lord. I'm Pastor David Rose now. God bless our time together in his word. Let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. I'll offer the prayer of the day. Lord God, before the suffering and death of your one and only Son, you revealed his glory on the holy mountain. Grant that we who bear his cross on earth may behold by faith the light of his heavenly glory and so be changed into his likeness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message today is recorded in Matthew chapter 17. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. I'll add a short prayer. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. Some things seem too wonderful to describe with words. Like how a butterfly lays the tiniest of eggs on a leaf and how that egg hatches to a tiny little caterpillar that grows into a bigger caterpillar that forms a chrysalis that opens to reveal a beautiful butterfly. So instead of trying to describe it for my granddaughters, I decided to show them. I bought a couple of southern milkweed plants, put them in a pot, and put them in my backyard and waited. In less than a week, I saw my first caterpillar, and then a second one, and then a third one. When I saw my 14th caterpillar, I went back to the store and bought a couple more milkweed plants. And after I went to the store for the third time and bought six more plants, I decided to move all the pots into the garage so that I wouldn't have any more caterpillars to feed. But to watch in wonder as they did what God created them and designed them to do. To go from that tiny egg to the watch them grow as a caterpillar, to watch them form the J-hook and then form the chrysalis, and then to watch that open and to see 
the most beautiful butterfly opening their wings to let them dry and then to fly away, too wonderful to describe with words. When Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to a high mountain, they were about to see a glorious change that would seem too wonderful to describe with words. By this time in his ministry, Jesus had taught his disciples so much. He had shown them so much. They had seen and heard things that only the Son of God could have done. Jesus wanted them, he needed them to know though, without a doubt, that he was the Messiah from God. So he asked them, and it's in the section that comes just before the words from Matthew chapter 17 that we heard just a moment ago. It comes in chapter 16, Jesus asked them, who do the people say I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But Jesus asked them, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus knew they believed he was the Christ without needing to ask them. But he also knew that they did not fully understand what that meant he must do. So Matthew tells us that From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. To prepare the disciples for the difficult days ahead, Jesus took Peter, James, and John away from the crowds, away from the other disciples, And he strengthened them in a glorious way that would help them in the days ahead and for the rest of their ministries. On the top of that mountain, Jesus was transfigured. He was changed right before their eyes. The Greek word that Matthew used to describe that incredible change is the same word that we use to describe that incredible change that happens when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. And we know that it was too wonderful to describe with words by what they used to try to describe it. We heard Matthew say that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Mark wrote in his gospel about the same account when he said his clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And Luke in his gospel said that his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. And then suddenly, While Jesus was showing this glimpse of his glory, Moses and Elijah appeared talking with him. Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let me make a shelter for each one of you. Maybe Peter was thinking about the time that Moses had spent time up on a high mountain with God. For 40 days, Moses got to stay with God on a mountain. And maybe Peter was hoping that him and James and John would get the chance to do that same thing. But before Jesus answered Peter, a bright cloud surrounded them and the voice of God the Father said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. That was too much holiness for those sinful men. They fell face down to the ground, terrified. And then, and then, Jesus came to them, touched them, and said, get up. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, all they saw was Jesus, as he had been. Can you see why Peter would have wanted Jesus to stay in his glory and to stay with him? And to stay away from all the trouble that they know they would be going back to down below? Me too. 
But that's not why Jesus had come to earth. It wasn't to stay on that mountain and to stay in his glory there. Thank God Jesus left that mountain and continued his walk to another mountain called Calvary. There his face would not shine like the sun, but would be pierced with a crown of thorns and would be swollen from the beatings. There his clothes would not be whiter than any bleach could any than anyone could bleach them, but they would still be dirty from praying with his face to the ground in the Garden of Gethsemane just hours earlier. And now also so very bloody. As much as Peter, as much as James and John, as much as Moses and Elijah, we needed Jesus to continue to leave his glory behind for a little while longer and to give his life to pay for all their sins and to pay for all of mine and to pay for all of yours. So that one day we might see him not in a glimpse, but in all his glory and live in a heaven that we will never have to leave. Last week a pastor asked me, what do you say to someone who asks, why am I still here? Why hasn't God taken me home to heaven? And I smiled as he asked because as I thought of that, I could picture in my mind the faces of many precious souls who have asked that very thing. Some who are in heaven now and some who can't wait to be. Some who knew that they would never get out of their bed again. Some who hurt in every part of their body some who hurt in their heart because of a relationship that never healed. Some who hurt in their minds because of disturbing memories or because of fearful uncertainties. Some who wondered how much longer, Lord, because I'm not doing anybody any good like this. And I have the privilege to say, but look what's happening right now. I get to visit you. And the Lord calls my visit with you serving him as I serve you and something that brings glory to his name. And how would we ever know how many other people the Lord has in mind to give this opportunity for them to serve God by serving you and to serve God by caring for you, to serve God by praying for you. And some people need all the help they can get. Don't take this away from them. <laughs> and on my very first visit, the very next day from having that conversation with, the, with that pastor, what do you think someone said to me? They said, Pastor, I don't know why the Lord still has me here. <laughs> to our many unknowns about what tomorrow will bring to our concerns for our families, for our country, for our world, to our fears about what the future might bring. Jesus comes to you in his word. And as real as he did for those disciples that day, he touches you to say, don't be afraid. You were worth walking back down that mountain knowing that he would be betrayed by a trusted friend, that he would be deserted by those closest to him, that he would be falsely accused, shamelessly mocked, brutally beaten, and wrongfully condemned to die. Because he and the Father knew that only his holy precious blood and his innocent sufferings and death could pay for all our sins. Without Jesus doing all of this for us, we would have only ever had reason to be terrified in the presence of his holiness, but he came to wipe away the stain and the shame and the guilt of all we have done. 
He came to calm all our fears. He came to give us hope, to give us peace, and not because we deserved any of it, but because he loves us so, so that we might see him in all his glory, so that we might never have to leave that glory, so that we might hear angels with our own ears, so that we might see loved ones who have died in faith, so that we might never be troubled by sin or sorrow ever again, no more pain, no more medicine, no more side effects, no more appointments, no more waiting for a call to make an appointment, No more tests, no more tests, results, no more ICU, no more memory care, no more urgent care, no more asleep half the day but can't sleep at night. Never wishing a day would last just a little while longer. Never wishing a day would quickly end. No more school, no more work, no more fear for our loved ones or what will happen to them. Not one thing that will bring any darkness, but a glorious change to a bright like the sun, a bright white, whiter than anyone can bleach it kind of bright, a bright like lightning kind of new life with God in heaven. Oh, how the Father strengthened the Son with a glimpse of his glory and a reminder of his love. Oh, how the Father strengthened the disciples for the difficult days before, during, and after. And oh, how the Father strengthens us day by day through his word and through his body and blood together with the bread and the wine of his holy supper to assure us, to touch us, to say, Don't be afraid. Your sins are all forgiven. And in these, he gives us a glimpse of his glory here and an assurance of endless glory there. Those hungry little caterpillars I mentioned ate every leaf of every plant and even started eating the stalks I replanted the poor remains of those plants in some new dirt, watered them, talked nicely to them, and I also protected them from any butterflies being able to lay any new eggs on them. And as then I watched as they came back to life. They grew new leaves. They sprouted new stalks that were filled with beautiful, bright new leaves. They grew the most beautiful flowers and finally produced the most beautiful pods filled with seeds that will grow more plants than I could have ever bought. I am going to plant those seeds all over the place. And I am going to ask God to please grow them. And then I'm going to hope that one day there will be more and more. Just like I did when I left a home visit this past week. As I stood outside with the couple, they said, we're going to try to bring our neighbors on this side of us. And we're also going to try to bring our neighbors behind us to come to church with us because they want one more to have the peace and the hope and the heaven they know they have in Christ and the glorious change that's coming. Jesus told his disciples, Peter, James, and John, not to tell anyone what they had just seen until they had seen the Son of Man raised from the dead. Dear Christian, Jesus has been raised from the dead. That means today is the day to tell someone. I'll help you. The Lord will work through the beautiful seeds of his word so that one day there will be more and more who look forward to a glorious change that's coming. 
Amen. I've got a short prayer, and after the end of that prayer, I'm going to invite you to please join together with me. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for showing us a glimpse of our Savior's glory now and for giving us the assurance that through the gift of faith you have worked in our hearts one day, we will see and we will live in your glory with all believers in heaven. Please work through your word and work through us to share all you have done with others so that they will see the glorious change that's coming. Please guide all things in our country and in our world in a way that only you can. Please grant wisdom, honesty, integrity to all who are serving in all kinds of positions of leadership and also for all who are serving in our government. Please protect and guide all who are serving in our United States military and all who are working in public health and safety to keep us safe and free. For these things and so many more that we have reason to ask you, we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I am so grateful to the Lord for the opportunity to be in God's word together with you like this. Will you please help me spread this? Will you help me grow this so that more people will be fed and strengthened by God's word like this also? Will you please click subscribe on the YouTube channel and then also share this with somebody that you know that I might never meet in person. And I know the Lord can work through this just like working by growing lots of little seeds through his word. God bless you. God keep you safe and in his care And God willing, I'll see you real soon.